I work with customized groupings all the time. Let me give you an example of a um, situation I have over here. I have uh, over here I have store sales, uh, stores that uh, uh, sell DVDs and games, like the Game Mania stores, and the uh, the uh, DVDs are categorized in uh, in different genres. And uh, so I have five over here, you can see, uh, or six. And imagine that I, for my reporting purposes, want to have custom groupings. So what I can do is uh, I just tick the column and uh, I scroll down and say group by selection. And I could, for example, make two groups, um, groups that I focus on. So I give it the name focus and I say, well, I want to focus on all DVDs in game and family. Add that and I create a new group and say do not focus and where I put all the other ones and uh, the ones I used are already grayed are, are already grayed out so here's my custom grouping uh, so let me find it back for you over here you see it if I now tick it you see that I uh, have now these two groups and um, in addition, uh, what I tend to do is create a little hierarchy on it. Yeah? So my new uh, custom groups uh, split apart any different genres that I uh, already had in my data set. So I create a custom grouping and I look to um, the genre group. Let me find it for you. Here it is and I click it to the right and the level below that is uh, the original genre that I already had. I give it a name and I take create and if I now create a visualization uh, you see uh, my new hierarchy popping up over here if I now create a visualization with uh, for example my actual spur group um, then you can see how it works I, I select work new total and I select my demo group and here you can see my two groups focus and do not focus and I can tick it and drill down and over here you see the two underlying uh, genres uh, that I had if I go back to the other one you can see the uh, the other ones popping up over there I'll do the selection so do not focus that's the other one and here you see the other ones Yes, so um, very useful uh, creating custom groups and on top of that create a custom hierarchy. Uh, another way that of um, grouping information is grouping on measures or metrics. And uh, to show you an example over there, I have um, in this data set also um, a metric that says the marketing campaigns that every little uh, store did. And so I just counted them. So I have per retailer that rents the DVDs. I counted the uh, number of uh, marketing campaigns that they did. Yeah. So if I want to uh, group that, I could do that uh, grouping by selection. Yeah, by making groups like I uh, just did. But imagine that uh, the number of values or the different values is extremely high. Yeah? Like in a typical fact table, you could go in another way. You could go group by wage. And if you select that, you will see that Lumira recognizes the lowest, the minimum and the highest uh, value. And it suggests uh, to create a number of intervals. Well, let me create three intervals. And um, so it's going to divide this, uh, these uh, numbers in three intervals. And it gives it a name uh, as a dimension. You can see them over here. So it divided one to three, uh, five to eight, and three to five. Of course, I could rename them. Yeah? So for example, I could uh, say replace that by um, middle, or um, and this one by uh, top. Top. Replace by bottom. And I apply that. So now let's create a new visualization. And um, I use a, a metric again. Um, well, let's use revenue total again. And 
what it's done, it has created the market, uh, the market campaign intervals as I did mention. Yeah, so you can see them over here. So bottom, middle and top. Uh, you could also very easily use them as color coding uh, as part of a, another one. So you can now see per genre yeah, which one had uh, lots of marketing campaigns, uh, less or uh, a little bit more. So I hope this helps and uh, enjoy working with uh, Lumia.